Hey, this is Phil Diaz. I'm the pastor at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, and this is our podcast. I want to thank you for joining us today. It's my prayer that God would use this podcast to speak to your life right where you're at. I pray it also builds your faith and helps give you perspective on how God can work, move, and transform your life. Enjoy the message. Amen. It is good to be here with all of you here today at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene. I want to welcome you once more to our church here today. It's a privilege to be here back from vacation. Uh, and I just want to take a quick moment. I know there's many watching online, so I just want to take a quick moment. Let's say hi to our EFAM that's watching online and say hi, EFAM. Hi. All right. Amen. We praise and thank the Lord for you watching online here today. So if you are watching, drop us a comment. Let us know that you're watching. Let us know how we can best connect with you and also pray for you as well. So I'm pumped to be here. Amen. Woo. It's been a little while. And as I told someone early this morning, I said, I hope I remember how to do this. Because it's been a little while. So today, uh, I want to talk to you about this, because I thought it would be fitting with the, uh, the holiday coming up. I guess it's the name for it. But today's sermon title is this. It's called Taking Off the Mask. Okay, Taking Off the Mask. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm taking off the mask. Taking off the mask. Taking off the mask. Amen. So we live in a culture that's full of masks, right? And, and I don't necessarily mean the masks that you buy at the Halloween section of Walmart, okay? But that is coming up. I'm talking about a different kind of mask. In fact, I'm talking about a mask that might be even invisible. It could be dangerous to you. And it might be something that actually really hides who you are. I'm talking about a mask that you put on every day to where you might be hurting, but you don't show or say anything to anybody about it. Talking about a mask that you put on every day where you're drowning with doubt on the inside, but on the outside, you're okay. I'm talking about a mask that says I'm fine when you're really not. I'm talking about a mask that you put on that on the inside you're dying of addiction. But on the outside, you don't want anyone else to know about that. I'm talking about a mask where you could be afraid and you read the headlines and you see the news and every day you're filled with fear and anxiety. But you never want to tell or stop to admit that to anyone. I'm talking about a mask that you put on every day where you're so full of pride that you never ask for help from anyone for anything. Any of these sound familiar to anyone? I want to say this this morning. Nobody is perfect. And that includes you. <laughs> now that's a sermon in and of itself, isn't it? No one is perfect. And that includes even me. And humanly speaking, we can all be experts at putting on a mask of different things in our lives. In fact, many of us are already experts on putting on a mask. You know, just think of like social media for a moment. Sometimes we can get a little bit jealous when we start seeing other people's pictures pop up on social media and what's going on. You know, you see the highlight reel of something. For example, someone posts a picture and it could be hashtag, oh, look at me, I'm in the gym again and I'm crushing it. Look at my muscles. (laughs) You will not see that on my social media. (laughs) Hashtag, I am living my best life. Woo! Hashtag, I'm blessed and not stressed. (laughs) Hashtag, I can't believe how lucky I am. Hashtag, all I do is win, no matter what. You might see some people post that, and then you're just thinking, "Uh uh-huh, can you keep going? Here's what social media does, though. Sometimes we filter out the flaws, we filter out the struggles and the doubts, And what are we actually left with? You're actually just left with a mask and a persona. And really, it's not the real you. It's a you that you want people to perceive as you, but it's really not the real you. What about your daily interactions? How many of you have ever answered, I'm fine, when you're anything but fine? I'm fine! Really, you don't sound, I'm fine! 
I'm, I'm really good at that. We smile, we nod, but really on the inside we're actually struggling and we're hurting. You put on a brave face because you think that's really just what you know people want to see. And the honest truth is it's just another mask. It gets really tricky sometimes because sometimes we even bring our masks into church. And that's where it gets interesting. You know, church is a place that is designed and designated to be a hospital. Amen? In fact, it's designed to be a hospital for sinners. It's not supposed to be a museum for a saint of how great we are. We come to church to talk about how great the God is that we serve. Amen? Amen. It's not about us. But sometimes we make it out to be. In fact, you might... Maybe this has been a situation you were in. Someone struggling, no, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine, brother, best I've ever been. Really? Didn't you have this thing go on and this, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm blessed, I'm highly favored. Woo, hallelujah. Truth is, maybe you came into church, and that's the mask you put on, but on the inside, you're actually a mess. You just hope nobody figures it out. You just figure, if I act this way, people, people won't notice it as much. The thing is, I'm going to ask an uncomfortable question, for I know it's an already an uncomfortable topic, but are we actually showing our real selves to God? That's what I want to know. And that's what I think is important for you to ask yourself. Are you showing your real self to God? And are you showing it to one another? So, the reason why this is so important is because I believe God wants us to be real. Amen? Amen. Let me ask you this. Do you think God wants you to lie to him? No. no? Why? Because he already knows if you're lying to him. And so here today, I want us to hear from the word of God. You guys ready to hear from the word of God on this here today? Amen. Amen. Let's stand for the reading of his word here today. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians. This is chapter 3, verse 18. I'm using the NIV for this here today, but if you have a different translation with you, that's wonderful as well. But this is what the word of the Lord says, and we're going to unpack this here in just a moment. But it says, and we all, who with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory, and are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Bow our heads to receive this word today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we've gathered within your house today. We thank you for the privilege of being here. We thank you, most importantly, Lord, that as we read this passage, Father, I pray for the unpacking of this within our hearts and within our lives. I pray, Lord, that you help me bring this message to life. But most importantly, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that, Lord, you just take control, Father, Lord. So may this message be a reflection of your heart to us here today. Lord, may your word speak to us in a, in a penetrating and a deep way to where, Lord, we, we just want to give ourselves more over to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. All God's people said. Amen. 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 You guys may be seated here today. So I want to help you guys unpack this word and see how it can actually fit and work within your life. So I want to break this down for you. It starts off with talking about and we all so I want you to take your finger and you point and say, we all, we all, because that's you and me, we all, okay? You didn't know Paul was Southern in his dialect, did you? We all. <laughs> it's another translation of y'all, but it's we all, okay? And we all. And it says, with, who with unveiled faces? What the Apostle Paul is saying to us within this piece of scripture here is today that there is no more hiding, folks. All right? To give you an idea of what he's trying to talk about, you kind of have to go back to the Old Testament. We think of Moses. Every time Moses encountered God, he had to wear a veil when he was into the very presence of God. But it gets better because now Paul is in the New Testament and the life of Jesus has happened. And in Jesus Christ... That is all God. Amen? Amen. In fact, 
When Jesus Christ died on the cross, the veil in the temple was torn in two. There was no more separation between God and man because God is here to be amongst us through the Messiah. And here's the deal. We have got a VIP, face-to-face, -face, access to God, 24-7, any time of day that you need. Amen. And because of that, all the praise belongs to Jesus Christ this morning. Let's give him praise. So we all come to the Lord, and it says, with, with unveiled faces, we no longer need a veil. The second part I want to look at is as we contemplate the Lord's glory. Contemplate the Lord's glory. You see, when we look at the Lord's glory, it is not to be just some sort of quick glance thing that we just check off our list. Because honestly, sometimes I feel like as the church, we just check it off real quick. Yes, presence of God, check you see, this is supposed to be a soul-searching stare. We're not just simply saying, I God, we leave. I God. We're, we're saying that we want to be able to lock eyes with the Almighty. When you contemplate something, don't you put your whole frame of mind into it? Okay? When you contemplate something, you get that doctor's bill that you've been waiting on for a month, and it's about five times higher than what you thought it would be, don't you sit and contemplate on that bill. Yeah. How much more do we need to contemplate on the Word of God? Amen. How much more do we need to contemplate on God within His presence? How much do we need to contemplate when we see, when we feel, when we know that the Lord's glory is upon us? How much more do we need to contemplate? I mean, I think the same goes for all of us. We need to put our whole mindset on the Lord and His glory. I mean, when was the last time that your soul locked onto contemplating about God and His glory was in your life, church? When was it? Think about that for a moment. Now, as we work through the rest of this passage, it says this. This is a huge phrase. We contemplate the Lord's glory and then we're being transformed into his image. I don't know about you, but that should make us all stand up and give God big, massive praise. Because he took time out to say that you don't have to stay the same way. That you can be changed. That you can be transformed. You don't have to be the same. And he does that. And that makes me excited. That makes me stop and to think and to contemplate on the goodness of God. Amen? And here's the great thing. It's a continuous action. It doesn't happen just once, or maybe twice or thrice. It can happen to you every time you enter into his presence. Church, I don't know about you, but that's an upgrade. You see, God gives us daily updates within our life. Every day, as Christians, our life should look, feel, and become just a little bit more like the God that we claim to say that we serve, that we love. Amen? Amen. And it starts when we learn how to contemplate His glory. And let him change us from the inside out. Give him praise for that, church. And then it gets better. And then it says this. We are transformed into his image with his ever-increasing glory. What does that mean? It means this. It means glory, glory, hallelujah. God is not done with me. This isn't just glory 1.0. This is glory 2.0. This is a glory unlimited within your life. You haven't seen anything like it. If God keeps leavening you up within his character, heart, mindset, and life. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lastly, it talks about, well, how does this happen? It comes from the Lord, it says, who is the Spirit. This is not a do-it-yourself project. 
You cannot fix yourself enough to where you can make yourself righteous enough to come before the Lord. The righteousness that we receive, the righteousness that you get, it doesn't come from you. It comes from Jesus, who is all righteousness for us. It comes from being in his life. And that is God doing and working and transforming us from the inside out. And so in Jesus Christ, you get a direct line to God, continuous updates, infinite upgrades, and as all thanks to this Holy Spirit that's still working and moving here. Give him praise. Woo. And I just love sharing this with you here today because I believe that if any of us here are going to be able to learn how to take off any of our masks, it's under the realization that the God that we serve is bigger than the mask that we put on. Amen? Amen. Amen. The God that we serve is bigger than the mask that we put on. I mean, in this verse, look at it. He's contemplating us to his presence and glory. He wants us to be transformed in his image. And with more glory being apparent within our lives, we can see how his spirit keeps working and moving within us. Amen? God is saying to us here today, because of these things, there's no need to be able to have to wear a mask. Because when you're in God's presence, he knows you better than you know yourself. Now take a moment here today to recognize who we're serving by giving him praise once more. Amen? Amen. All right, so my first point today is just talking about this. There's dangers when it comes to wearing a mask. The dangers of wearing a mask. You know, church, if you think wearing masks is a harmless game in your life, I've got news for you. It's not. It's time for a reality check. In fact, we have some scripture to help back that up. I want us to look today at Matthew chapter 23, and we're going to look at the first seven verses, and then we're going to look at 27 and 28. But this is what it says. It says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads, and put them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their uh, philasteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. And then at verse 27, 28, it says this. This is Jesus speaking again. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! Exclamation point. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside. And on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. <clears throat> what a verse. What a passage. Jesus is talking about and talking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees are religious leaders who were in Jesus' time. And they were very good at wearing a lot of different masks. On the outside, they seem righteous, almost flawless. But Jesus called them out on that. And he said, woe to you. You're hypocrites. Huh. You're like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside. But on the inside, you're full of dead people's bones and all uncleanliness. I don't know about you, but I would not want Jesus to say that to me. Amen. But he said that. He said that to these Pharisees. These were people who thought they were holy on the outside. And if they could just look holy and play the part and do the part on the outside, they don't really have to do anything on the inside of their lives. They can stay spiritually dead. But the danger of this is they're wearing a mask of that. And the danger is that they stay in spiritual stagnation. You see, the Pharisees were so concerned with their outside image, they ignored their inside state. They knew the law. They didn't know God. And sometimes that can be like who we can be. 
Oh, we can quote the scriptures. Oh, we can carry our Bibles around. We can play the part. But if we're not careful, we can end up just like them. Stuck in a rut. And going nowhere fast. The other danger of that is that we can mislead others. Because when we put on our masks, <clears throat> not only are we deceiving ourselves, <laughs> which is bad enough, but we can also be setting up a false standard for others to follow. The Pharisees' hypocrisy didn't just affect them. It trickled all the way down to those that they were trying to lead. And your mass life might be someone else's view of Christianity, of faith. And you might be the only Bible that somebody tries to read. And if you're living a lie, what kind of message is that sending? Amen? Think about a row of dominoes. How many of you love stacking dominoes? Amen? Okay. So you're stacking your dominoes. What happens when you take the first domino and you just give it a little What happens? They all fall down. Especially if you took time to order them in the right way. That can take you eight hours and then they all get done in like about a minute. <laughs> but here's the thing. When one person fakes it, another person may do that. Another person, another person, another person. Before you know it, there's a whole community of people that's built on falsehoods. It's not built on the rock solid truth of what Jesus Christ says. And at the end of the day, it's a heart issue. Because the Pharisees were more concerned about the cleanliness of their hands than they were about the cleanliness of their insides, of their hearts. But you see, it says in the scripture that God looks at the heart of man. And our mask can often hide who we really are. But they can't hide your height. They can't hide your heart from God. So don't be fooled into thinking that you can get away with that. And here's just the reality. Masks are a hindrance. They're a hazard to your spiritual health. And they're a, health, they're a hazard to those around you. As we talked about here earlier today, if you want to live in God's increasing glory, all of that has to come off. No exceptions, no excuses. And so that brings me to my next point. Hopefully this is a little happier for you. What is it like living life without a mask? Oh, this is going to be good. I hope that we can really think about this here this morning. Living without a mask. Because this is the good news. We've talked about the masks. We've talked about the dangers. Now I want to flip the script here today. What happens when we do away with those things that's been hiding who we really are? Here's the thing. Spoiler alert. Something amazing happens in your life. Something amazing happens when you can just come before God with all of your flaws, with all of your mistakes, with all of who you are. And something amazing happens when we do this simple thing, when we humble ourselves before God. Why is that? Well, it's because God loves a humble heart. Amen? It's the opposite of what the Pharisees were. And I'm going to tell you, you get some good things out of this. When you come with a humble heart, you have the freedom of transparency. Amen? Yeah, freedom. We all love freedom, right? I mean, freedom is a wonderful gift. And when you're not putting on an act, you're not weighed down by the expectations and the judgments of anyone or anything else. Imagine, you're not dictated in your life by any of the likes or follows on social media. You're not dictated by the addictions. You're not dictated by what other people say about you. You're not dictated and weighed down with the oppression of sin within your life. You have a freedom. Amen? You have the freedom of living a transparent life, not holding back, running full force toward the glory of God. And that's honestly what I kept thinking about. We were sitting on the Clearwater Beach, and I just kept thinking about how freeing this just felt. 
to let the oceans hit you in such a way to where I'm not being drifted off in the water, but I'm standing my ground and I can just feel that. There's a freedom within that, folks. There's a freedom in knowing that when God, He touches your life much like those waves, you're not going under. You're feeling the love. You're feeling His grace. You're feeling the things in your life that you really need for Him. And then here's the great thing. Through that, we can know that He wants to transform us. And that's a big payoff within our lives because I would rather be in the continual transformation of the Lord as opposed to being in the under wave of the anchoring of my own sin, drowning me, taking me under, and then living that life to where my mask is always on. I would rather live in the freedom of God than in the oppression of sin. Amen? Give him praise to him. And that's what the Apostle Paul, in his own way, is trying to say in 2 Corinthians. And we all who with unveiled faces would contemplate the Lord's glory, being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. When your face is unveiled and you're not wearing a mask, you get to be a better version of who you are because the version that you're creating is no longer a version that you're making, it's a version that God is transforming. Amen? Amen. It's not self-help. It's called divine transformation. Give Him praise for that. And when we're open and authentic to Him, we are inviting His divine presence into our lives. You know, you're like a vessel that God can pour into. The emptiness that you've been feeling in your life, God wants to fill that up with more of Him. He doesn't want to give you more masks to wear. He doesn't want to give you more burdens to carry. He wants to fill you up more with who He is and His Holy Spirit. And He wants you to be able to soak up the life that He has for you. So today, my invitation is to each and every single one of you here. The invitation here today is to live with an unveiled face. To experience the freedom, the embrace, and the transformation of the tangible love and grace of God. And the great thing that we believe in the Church of the Nazarene is it doesn't have to be a one-time thing. And I love that. Because I need it more than just one time in my life. I, I need to feel and know his love is here with me every day. Folks, how many of you just want to feel his presence in your life every day? Amen. Amen. So here today, what I want to do is just real simple. I just want us to stay up here this morning. And I just want us to be able to look deeply within our hearts and within our souls here today. And I just, uh, I just want us just to be able just to close our eyes, bow our heads. And I just want you to take your hands and just leave them in an open position. I just want us to pray here today. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you here today, we close out here today. Father, I'm asking that your Holy Spirit come and speak to us. Father, it says that in your word here, 2 Corinthians 3.18, Lord, that all of these things that we've talked about here today are given to us by your Spirit. So, Lord, with our hands out and our hands open, Lord, we want to receive more of your Holy Spirit. Father, for some of us here today, taking off masks is a very difficult thing because we've been living with them for so many years. Father, to, to actually be vulnerable is scary for many. Lord, give us strength to be vulnerable. To, number one, be vulnerable to you, but to also understand that it's okay to give our burdens 
over to each other, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, whatever it is that we're dealing with, Lord, we can imagine this within our hands. But with our hands open, Father, I pray for us here today that we no longer desire the things that we carry. So, Lord, we just place these things within your hands. So with our open hands here today, Lord, we, we pray the song that we sang earlier. Lord, give us clean hands. Give us a pure heart. Lord, let us not take and make our souls look at one another, but to focus solely on you. No more idols. No more masks. Just being real and vulnerable within your presence. So, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit. Convict us, Father. Speak to us and help us, Lord, in this time. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. 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 Give God praise this morning. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. If you would like to connect with me or Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, you can find us on Facebook at Greencastle Nazarene and also on our website, www.greencastlenazarene.com. May you have a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord.